This video will prove the founding of the real Mount Sinai as well as some other biblical artifacts and biblical truths that have been hidden from you all along. Now the question you should be wondering is why would they hide such a thing? Because they don't want you to know who your true creator is. And today I'm going to be proving to you that the Exodus was in fact a true story and has a real location as well as some other biblical artifacts and things as well. So here we are, and we hear at this website by Ark Discovery International, and it's talking about what the real Mount Sinai, and where is the real Mount Sinai? It's in Jabal al Lal's in Saudi Arabia, not the one that they try to put that they try to pin it. Because why do they put it there? They put it there for a reason. They don't want you to know the truth. They like to say that oh, the Mount Sinai is in the middle of of the Sinai Peninsula. They put it there to fool you and to make it seem like, oh, well, archaeologists can't find it. Archaeologists can't find it. There must be no real evidence. They do that because they don't want you to know who your creator is. So now it's time to expose the liars and the lies for who they really are. And here we are. And here I am, and it says, the traditional location of Mount Sinai in the Sinai Peninsula is based upon tradition that was started by Constantine or his mother, both of whom claimed to have dreams of where biblical sites were located. No, they were just lied to. They just lied to do that. And it goes on to say, there is no Jewish tradition of the geographical location of Mount Sinai. It seems that its exact location was obscure already in the time of the monarchy. The Christian hermits and monks, mostly from Egypt, who settled in southern Sinai from the 2nd century CE on, made repeated efforts to identify the locality of the Exodus where actual places to which the believers could make their way as pilgrims. The identification of Mount Sinai, either with Jebel Sebal near the oasis of Firan, or with Jebel Musa, can be traced back as far as the 4th century CE to Constantine's time. And this is according to who? The Jewish Encyclopedia, volume 14, page 1599, because they're good at telling the truth. Uh, that it was sarcastic. But here is the actual, more accurate a root of what the Exodus, and as you can see, this is where the biblical Hebrews uh, exited, and then they came here and crossed at the Gulf of Aqaba, because in some biblical maps and locations, they like to show that, oh, they crossed this way and came in here. How can that be when they didn't cross the Red Sea? Unless they're lying, of course. But it says, the location of Midian east of the Gulf of Aqaba is verified by many other scholars. The biblical references connecting Sinai with Mount Seir, Edom, and the land of Midian seem clearly to indicate this region east of the East of the Gulf of Aqaba, as pointed out by Bake Walhausen, Sace Moore, Shade Gall, Gunkel, Edward Meyer, Schmidt, Grassmann, Haupt, and by Alois Musel in the Northern Hagas on the track of the Exodus, page 87. So you can see other archaeologists and scholars have pointed out that the Gulf of Aqaba is where the real Exodus is and took place and where uh, biblical Bible texts locate the real Mount Sinai. As you can see, Jabal al Laws is Midian, where the real Mount Sinai is, and the real crossing of the Exodus is here at the Gulf of Aqaba in New Waiba, Egypt. And I'm going to prove to you that that's the real location and show you just what ha what is the truth. And it says Mount Sinai has to be in Midian, because Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, which is right here, and he sat down by a well, and this is according to Exodus chapter 2. Maps indicate Midian is east of the Gulf of Aqaba in northwest Saudi Arabia and the area shown on the map above. Now what you should be asking yourself is why is it that uh, Saudi Arabia and other Middle Eastern nations where these biblical sites are located, why are they blocked off by war and other, and other means? Interesting. It says, Moses fled to a foreign land, not to the Sinai Peninsula, and she, Zipporah, bore him a son, and he called his name Gershom and said, I have been a stranger in a foreign land, according to Exodus chapter 2. Moses was in a different country, away from any Egyptians in Saudi Arabia. He could not have been in the Sinai Peninsula, as that area was Egyptian-controlled territory full of Egyptian mines and communication towers. Moses would have easily been captured in that area. Midian and Horeb are in the same location. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of Yahuwah Elohim. 
And it says Jethro was the leader of the Midianites who found the air area east of the Gulf of Aqaba in the northwestern regions of the Arabian Desert, according to Britannica. When researching the location of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia that Mr. Wyatt proposed, I went to the East Tennessee State University Library and found two extremely detailed maps of Saudi Arabia. On both maps, I found the name Jethro next to the town of Al-Bad, which is near Jabal al-Lals, the correct Mount Sinai. See maps below. You can see it right here in a second map here as well that we will see. And if you zoom in on it, you can actually see Jethro just right there. So what does that tell you? What are they lying about? I'm telling you, this goes much deeper than you think. But as we go down, we see uh, the means the caves of Jethro, and we see the caves. One of the caves of Jethro, or Moses' cave near Al Bad, where in Jabal Al Lals. And if we keep going and scrolling down, we see Dr. Kim standing in an entrance to the cave, and it says, What? Mount Sinai in Arabia. But let's keep going. Now I'm showing you this to show you that this is the real, actual, authentic site because this picture right here shows you the authentic picture of what the split rock of Horeb and Mount Jabal all lost. The rock that Moses struck in order to get out water for the children of Israel as spoken of in Shamud or Exodus chapter 17. Oh, but I know you probably think it's photoshopped. I, I know you probably think it's fake. But unfortunately for you, it is the truth. Because I'm telling you, they've been hiding all of this from you. They don't want you to see it. And according to Josephus, it says that Mount Sinai was the highest of mountains in the city of Midian, which is just outside Inside the town of Al Bad. Jabal Al Lals is the highest mountain in the upper two thirds of the country. Also, Philo said Mount Sinai was located in the Sinai, east of the Sinai Peninsula, and south of Palestine. That can only mean it's in one place, which is what? In Saudi Arabia. That's where it is. And you can see the research in the hallowed grounds, and the research goes on from there and the layout of the mountains and the artifacts. But it says the upper 200 feet of Jabal al Lals is burned black, as we have seen in previous photos above. The Saudi government will confiscate any photographs of the mountain and will not allow any tourists into the country. But U.S. government satellite photos and a few private photos smuggled out of the country reveal the secret mountain by its unique blackened peak. Unlike the traditional site, there are thousands of acres in which to encamp at the base of this mountain, while clearly being visible from the mountaintop. Why would they hide that? Why don't they want you to see that? Why is the Saudi government hiding that? Because they don't want you to know who your creator really is, and they have to hide it. It, it shows a, sol a solitary tree between the two borders. It also shows a guardhouse government sign and fence around the front of Mount Jabal all Laws, and it also shows the altar of the golden calf. And it says the base of which the golden calf altar was placed atop. Notice inscriptions of bulls. This is located in the encampment area out Mount Sinai in Arabia and in Midian. Wow. Is this the place where the Aaron built the golden calf, even though they weren't supposed to during the time that Moses was in Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights? Looks like it. And as you can see, if you get closer, you can see the bulls here, you can see one there, you can see another there. Well, interesting. And then it says, and it even gives um, a key to it, it says, a dozen giant boulders are stacked in the encampment area and reveal 12 ancient Egyptian petroglyphs of bulls. It is believed the golden calf was placed upon these rocks. Large altars are found on the east and west sides of the mountain and here are some more photos uh, courtesy Aaron Sin and it even shows Google as well and it shows the archaeological area of warning and of course they don't want people there but the government acknowledges archaeological significance they know the truth but don't want you to see it why because they're hiding truth from you it's time to wake up to the truth and I know some of you are going to be willfully ignorant of this truth but he that have an ear let him hear. So it goes on uh, from there and gives more pictures of actual artifacts. And like I said, I'm going to leave these links below so you can actually see it for yourself. But this shows uh, Dr. Kim next to drawings in the encampment area. And he was a personal physician to the prince in Saudi Arabia and to the king. He lived in Saudi around 15 years. And you see more inscriptions of the actual biblical exodus and it even shows the menorah inscription on rocks in saudi arabia it says in the encampment area dr kim pointed to the oldest image of the golden oil lampstand ever found this is where the lampstand was first made the menorah 
and we see it from there and it goes on to talk about more research i highly recommend you all look this stuff up for yourself don't just take my word for it do your own research and come to your own conclusions but i'm even going to leave the links below and show you even more now we're at that same website again and this talks about the red sea crossing and the reason i'm showing you this is because i want you to see just the proof behind it all but first that first it talks about a history of moses having lived in egypt as well uh, prior to the exodus taking place now personally i believe that moses was uh, i'm in Amenhotep IV, uh, but they say it was Tutmosis II. It could have been the same person. I do believe that the Exodus did take place in 1446 BC, but of course that's, you know, up for debate as usual. However, of course, the traditional Mount Sinai, there's no evidence. Why? Because they want you to believe that it was fake. They want you to believe that it didn't take place. They need you to believe that it, oh, it didn't happen. Why? Because they don't want you to know your true creator. They want you to be atheist as much as possible. But even if we, even if you try to show people this, they still want to argue and in, in, in everything when the truth is right in front of us. And the real biblical site of the Exodus is New Waiba, Egypt. And it's going to show you just in a second in the actual route, uh, which is uh, the Red Sea on the east side of the Gulf of Aqaba. And it goes on to say that the wilderness has them entangled in actual pictures when traveling through the wilderness of the Red Sea. Uh, it, it talks about this in Exodus chapter 13 and 14. But when you go to the beach where the crossing took place, we're in New Waiba, Egypt. And of course, it says uh, Egyptian military fortress probably Migdol blocked any northern escape route along the beach. Uh, and it says, additionally, there were mountains obstructing their escape to the south. The mountains came down to the sea, as mentioned by Josephus, for there was on each side a ridge of mountains that terminated at the sea, which were impassable by reason of their roughness and obstructed their flight. And this is according to the antiquities of the Jews. Uh, and you can see the mountains at the beach today. The people were about to turn against Moses because he had led them to an area where they were trapped and would surely die, or so they thought. And of course, this is the New Waiba Beach. Then this is the actual crossing of the Exodus. And we can see, you'll see the column. You'll see the uh, chariot wheels that are underwater in this area. I'm telling you, it's all here. Now, this is the granite column of Solomon. And it says this column matches one on the other side of the... Gulf of in Saudi Arabia, which had the inscriptions intact. The Hebrew words Mitzrayim, which means Egypt, death, water, Pharaoh, Edom, Yahuwah, and Solomon were on that column. So what does that tell you? And it's New Waiba, Egypt. That's where this is, that's where the column is found. And here's the column right here, which marks the crossing site. And in case you don't know, you'll find one of the columns on one side of New Waiba, Egypt, as well as on the Saudi Arabia side on the other side of the Gulf of Aqaba. But it says, King Solomon had these columns erected 400 years after the miracle of the crossing of the Red Sea on dry land. Solomon's seaport was at the northern tip of the Gulf of Aqaba at Elat, for according to 1 Kings chapter 9. And he was very familiar with the Red Sea crossing site as it was in his neighborhood. The Bible even mentions this column in Isaiah chapter 19, verses 19, where it says, And that day there will be an altar to Yahuwah in the midst of the land of Mitzrayim, or Egypt, in a pillar to Yahuwah at its border. Wow, that's exactly right there. Interesting. You can visit the beach today and see the column in person as, as this researcher was able to do in October 2005. And you can actually see it on Google Images as well. They show you right there. But it's what's also interesting is the name New Waiba. Like I said, this name right here, New Waiba, Egypt, is short for what? It's short for this name right here, New Waiba al Muzayina which means it means the waters of Moses opening. This is amazing. And the exact spot where the crossing took place, we have the site confirmed by maps because that's the crossing route. This is New Waiba, Egypt. This is the Gulf of Aqaba. And this is the side of Saudi Arabia, uh, as you can see on a map. Uh, and you can keep going on with the pictures, the view at Red Sea. But what I want to really focus your attention to as well is the chariot wheels that were found in the sea at New Waiba. Is that a coincidence? They even took pictures and found actual chariot wheels. Above chariot wheels fixed to axles standing at attention on this seabed. You can see them right here. You can see one right here as well and another right there. 
above left photo taken of a gilded chariot wheel that remains on the seafloor. It was found by Ron Wyatt using a molecular frequency generated from his boat above after he set the equipment to search for gold. The Bible said all the chariots of Egypt and 600 choice chariots of gold veneered models were in the army pursuing Yahuwah Elohim's people. It is speculated there were 20,000 chariots destroyed that day. Above right is a drawing of a four-spoke chariot found in an Egyptian tomb from the same time period. Four, six, and eight spoke wheels are found here in the Gulf and were only used at the same time during the 18th, well actually the 13th dynasty or 1446 BC when the exodus took place. But do they want you to know that? Why are they hiding this from you should be the question. Why don't they want you to know this? There were numerous chariot wheels plus human and horse bones at the crossing site. Above our right is a human femur bone that is covered by coral and was tested at Stockholm University. It is from the right leg of a man 365 to 170 centimeters tall. It is basically mineralized by resting in the Red Sea for 3,500 years. And we see more a coral covering chariot wheels on a vertical axle that is buried in the sand although this is a typical bill fry found this within 10 minutes of searching at new Iba. so case in point you can find these chariot wheels in new Iba, egypt oh but you probably still think they're photoshopped you probably still think this is a lie it's time to wake up now it goes on to say that Ryan Wyatt found this, this wheel with the Ray Center Hub. A common marker is the Ray Center Hub that will give a metal reading when tested. And of course, this is how they tested it and how they were able to see it and the uh, footage that they used. And what did they see? They see more chariot wheels were found possibly connected to an axle. Notice the Ray Center Hub. It is against a lot of anchor boats. So we were floating by this as the image was shot by the RO. V and it says above is a horse's hoof that is shrunken since drying out. Horses are not found in the Sinai Peninsula today. The fake one. I wonder why. So the conclusion Mount Sinai must definitely is definitely in Saudi Arabia for sure and not the Sinai Peninsula because they're lying to you. But it says again above a round chariot wheel found off the Gulf of Aqaba coast of Saudi Arabia opposite of New Waiba, Egypt. And you can see the photo courtesy Vivica Ponton. And it goes on and we see another chariot wheel next to it. And it goes on and even has a documentary. I'm going to leave the links below so you can see it for yourself. And please do the research on this on your own and then come to your own conclusions. But for all you skeptics out there, yes, the Exodus is real. It is true. Egyptians have even written about the Exodus. And I'm going to tell you and prove to you just what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn your attention now to what's called the Epiwer Papyrus, which is an ancient papyrus that was taken from Egypt and actually just so happened to quite well document the Exodus quite well and has many specific mentions of the Exodus. And I'm going to leave the link for this below too, but it says in the early 19th century, a papyrus dating from the end of the Middle Kingdom was found in Egypt. It was taken to the Leiden Museum in Holland and interpreted by A.H. Gardner in 1909. The complete papyrus can be found in the book uh, Admo Admonitions of an Egyptian from a uh, Hieratic papyrus in Leiden. The papyrus describes violent upheavals in Egypt, starvation, drought, escape of slaves with the wealth of the Egyptians, and death throughout the land. The papyrus was written by an Egyptian named Depuer and appears to be an eyewitnessing account of the effects of the Exodus plagues from the perspective of an average Egyptian. Below are excerpts from the papyrus together with their parallels in the book of Exodus. And if you want a, le a lengthier discussion of the papyrus and the historical background of the Exodus, see Jewish Action Spring 1995 article by Brad Aronson entitled, When Was the Exodus? Of course, be very careful because, you know, so-called Jews, they do lie because the real Jews are so-called black people. But anyway, let's keep going. It says, Epure Papyrus, Leiden 344. It says, according to 2, verse 5 and 6, plague is throughout the land, blood is everywhere. Uh, 2, 10, river, the river is blood. Men shrink from uh, tasting human beings and thirst after water. That is our water. That is our happiness. What shall we do in respect thereof? All is ruin, which happens to match a bunch of what the Torah says in Exodus or Shamut, chapter 7, verses 20 to 24, where it says all of the rivers of the water returned to blood. There was blood throughout all the land of Egypt and the river stank and all the Egyptians dug around the water for river to drink for they could not drink of the water of the river. And you still think that this is a fake? 
you better wake up. But then, like I said, you can match it from um, in the Torah and what Exodus says, and here's chapters 9 and 10, uh, but it goes on to say for in the impure papyrus for sooth, gates, columns, and walls are consumed by fire. Lower Egypt weeps. The entire palace is without its revenues. To it belong by right wheat and barley, geese and fish. Forsooth, grain has perished on every side. Forsooth, they that has perished which was yesterday seen. The land is left over to its weariness like the cutting of flax. Then it says, All animals their hearts weep, cattle moan. Behold, cattle are left to stray, and there is none to gather them together. And this is, of course, the uh, equivalent in Shamut uh, in Exodus chapter 9, where it says, The hand of Yahuwah is upon thy cattle which is in the field, and there shall be a very grievous sickness gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field and he that did not fear the word of yahuwah left his servants and cattle in the field the land is without light according to the uh, epira papyrus and according to the torah in shamut chapter 10 verses 22 and there was a thick darkness in all the land of mitzrayim or egypt and it goes on to say Forsooth, the children of princes are dashed against the walls. Forsooth, the children of princes are cast out in the streets. The prison is ruined. He who places his brother in the ground is everywhere. It is groaning throughout the land, mingled with lamentations. And according to Shamut, or Exodus chapter 12, it says, And it came to pass that at midnight Yahuwah smote all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, or Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive that was in the prison. There was not a house where there was not one dead. There was a great cry in Egypt, just like as the papyrus says, there was groaning throughout the land. And mind you, this Epura papyrus, this is an actual document. It's real. It is a real document. This is by some, this is by an actual Egyptian who had firsthand account of the Exodus. So we know it's not a lie. It's the truth. It actually happened. But it goes on to say in the Epura papyrus, behold, the fire has mounted up on high. Its burning goes forth against the enemies of the land. And then in uh, Exodus chapter 13, verses 21, it says, by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. Wow. And then it says, gold and lapis lazuli, silver and malachite, carnelian and bronze are fastened on the neck of female slaves. And then this says in Exodus chapter 12, verses 35 to 36, and they requested from the Egyptians silver and gold articles and clothing, and Yahuwah Elohim made the Egyptians favor them, and they granted their request. The Israelites thus drained Egypt of its wealth. Here we are at another source, and this is according to the Messianic Literary Corner, where it also proves ancient Egyptian chariots found in the Red Sea. And where were they found? In the Gulf of Aqaba. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is so that you can see and do the research on your own. But it says, the Hebrew exodus from Egypt is in scope the most miraculous event ever to be recorded by man. Its historicity, though has been challenged and reduced to mere mythology by many religious theologians or atheists, and biblical archaeologists until recently. In 1978, Ron Wyatt, a biblical archaeologist without formal training, confounded the opponents of biblical historical accuracy by discovering the true Exodus Red Sea crossing in the Gulf of Aqaba at Nuwaiba, Egypt, Sinai, Peninsula, and it's been validated with the discovery of remains of ancient Egyptian army chariots lying at the bottom of an underwater land bridge connecting Sinai to Saudi Arabia. Many coral encrusted chariot wheels and a gilded four-spoke chariot wheel were found. Fossilized human and horse bones were also recovered, but carbon dating was not possible. At least that's what they want us to, to believe. And you can, you can find links here more of the discovery and the research and videos as well. And like I said, come to your own conclusions. But like I said, they found this stuff, folks. This stuff is no longer a secret. They found the real, the real authentic Mount Sinai. They found the real authentic everything. They found it all in New Waiba, Egypt. It's right there. Just go search it for yourself. Do your own research. They found the real Red Sea. They found the real crossing. They found all of this stuff. But that's not all they found because I'm going to take you to another source that also talks about what else did they find and why it relates to biblical stories and prophecies as well. Now this rock that you're looking at is the rock that's called Femin Stella. And what it means is that this rock de details 
in Egypt, and this is found in the island of Sahel in Egypt, the rock of the seven-year famine that was spoken of in the book of Genesis during the time of Joseph. And this is the actual inscription of the rock and how it looks. And later on, I'm going to take you to the actual, to what it says. But I want you to see just for yourself just how they're finding real biblical artifacts and that this stuff, no, it's not photoshopped. No, it's not a lie. But you could keep sitting there thinking it is, even though the truth says otherwise. Now this gives partial text of what they found on the island of Sahel, which is the famine shtel or the rock that they found that proves that there was in fact a seven year famine during the time of Egypt and during the time of Joseph. But it says during the reign of uh, Dozier, the third dynasty, a terrible drought lasted for seven years. And it says, I was, mourn I was in mourning on my throne. Those of the palace were in grief because happy had failed to come in time. In a period of seven years, grain was scant, Kernels were dried up. Every man robbed his twin. Children cried. The hearts of the old were needy. Temples were shut. Shrines covered with dust. Everyone was in distress. I consulted one of the staff of the Ib Ibis, the chief lector priest of Imhotep. And Imhotep is said to be Joseph, by the way, son of Ptah, south of the wall. He departed. He returned to me quickly. He let me know the flow of happy. Imhotep, or Joseph, a high official and renaissance man, revealed to the king that the Nile had its origins in a land consecrated to Canum, and gave an account of the building materials available at Elephantine. Canum appeared to J Joser in a dream with the promise to end the drought and describe how a temple should be built. Grateful jo Dozier reestablished the cult of Canum at Elephantine. And we know the story, the story of Genesis where of course, the Pharaoh has a dream and, and doesn't know how to interpret it. So then Joseph interprets and says that what would happen, that there would be seven years of plentiful and seven years worth of a famine. Wow, sounds exactly just like this. And of course, this is the partial translation of the Stella text. And in Hotep or Joseph's account of Elatines, it's gods and mineral tools. And this is what he says and sort of the sacrifice and dream. You could come read this here yourself. But I just thought it was interesting because the text does reveal what? seven years of a famine and it even talks about it there so this stuff is real folks and it's time to see the truth for what it really is but that's not all because we also know that noah's ark has been founded as well they found noah's ark and where did they find it in Mount Ararat in present-day Turkey. You can also do research on that on your own. But I'm telling you this to tell you that, yes, the Bible is true. The word of Yahuwah is true. Now, they've been lying to you for so long and making you think that, oh, oh, they, there's no archaeological evidence because the reason there's no archaeological evidence, according to them, is because they're the ones hiding it. Just because it's hidden doesn't mean it's not there just because it's hiding doesn't mean it doesn't exist because it does and yahuwah's word is true but like i said i hope that when i leave these links you will do your own research on your own and come to your own conclusions and not believe everything i say but actually do the research for yourself and really discover this stuff for yourself folks because you'll see just how interesting it really is but if you already haven't please seek yahuwah and his true son yahusha and really seek the word of yahuwah on your own so that you too can see the truth for what it really is this is truth unveiled shalom